We've won just a shade under half the races so far in Season 2 and we are challenging Red Bull for the Constructors and Drivers World Championships. So let's keep the morale high with the drivers and give them some new contracts. Hello folks, welcome back to F1 Manager, welcome back to AHGP where I am managing Mercedes and uh, we've won the last three races, the most recent being our home race, the British Grand Prix around Silverstone 1 by Sir Lewis Hamilton and well, we've won five races this season now, Red Bull have won six, all with Max Verstappen and uh, the championship picture looks like this, we are, what's that, 44 points behind Red Bull now, so if they have a double DNF and we finish first and second with the fastest lap, then uh, there's a chance that we can take the lead, well, we'd at least go level with them on points. And uh, the gap in the Drivers' Championship is 14 points between Max Verstappen and George Russell. Lewis Hamilton won the last race, uh, of course. So I think we give our drivers some new contracts because they are out of contract in six months time at the end of this season so let's start with Hamilton and see if we can get the seven time world champion to stay on for another year or two so um, he's currently on 30 million a year let's up that to maybe 32 million a year see if he's happy with that signing on bonus three million I think we've got like 71 million dollars in the bank, yeah, in the top right you can see it. Uh, we'll just up this. A bit faster, please. Oh, it's so, oh, too fast. Wasn't concentrating. It needs to be, it needs to be scroller, or you need to be able to type it in, I think. Uh, race bonus, I'm gonna up that to 650, uh, 670 for a podium. Uh, so it costs us $10 million to hire him. That's if he agrees to, uh, Two more seasons and starts. Should we start it next season? Might as well. I hope that still works because <laughs> technically the, con the contract would end and then the contract would start. So let's offer that contract to Lewis. Response received. Declined. Ooh. He's considering retiring soon on the contract length. But a higher salary might make me stay in the sport. Interesting. Uh, he's happy with start date happy with the salary happy with everything else so let's let's up it to 35 million a year let's splash the cash here at Mercedes and see if we can convince Lewis to do two more seasons otherwise we'll just do one year at probably 33 million contract accepted two more seasons of Lewis Hamilton which would take him to the ripe old age of 41 He'll be nearly 42 when this contract ends. But, I mean, Alonso's still doing it. So, why the devil not? Let's renew the contract of Lewis Hamilton, the most recent race winner in Formula 1. And let's secure our future in the hands of George Russell. Uh, so, next season as well. Let's up his to... He's on, what, 7.5 million at the moment? 7 and 3 quarter million? Let's... Oh, may, that got away from us there. Let's try 12 and a half million, an upgrade of about five million dollars a year. And uh, contract length, let's go three seasons. Which starts at the end of, well, starts at the start of next season. He's declined it. Mm. This salary isn't enough for me. Oh, George is getting greedy. Let's go 15 million then. We are Mercedes, we can pay this. We don't need to worry about money per se. Once received, he's oh he's being so greedy. I mean he has won three races and is contending for the world championship, so perhaps we should reward it uh, appropriately. So let's go to twenty million. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how much money does he want? <laughs> this is insane. His patience, oh his patience is now low. We had this problem with uh, Lewis Hamilton last year. We didn't get the first round of negotiations right. 20, oh, do we, 22 and a half million. He's probably going to turn this down and we're going to have to come back to it. Uh, okay, so three seasons. Start date next season. 22 and a half million dollars. 
I mean, Lewis is now on 35 million. We might as well, actually, we might as well go to 25. Okay, and uh, we'll up the race bonus as well. We're just going to throw money at our drivers. Take our money. Take our money. Uh, £225,000 for a podium. Right, offer contract. He'll, he'll, he won't want to negotiate if he declines this. He's accepted it. There we go. This salary is okay, but I think you can do better. That's all you're getting, George. <laughs> Renew the contract. Sign it. There we go. We have signed our two drivers for at least the next two years. Uh, Fred Vesti will have to wait in the wings for a little while yet, but we can prepare him. And uh, Lewis Hamilton is tied down for another two seasons to try and get that elusive eighth world championship. Uh, just a quick update after Q1. Look how close the top four are. Mercedes and Red Bull covered by less than a tenth of a second. Um, what's that? 73 and a half seconds of flat out running in Q1. And it's less than a tenth of a second that covers the top four. Alonso's not far off, nor a Ferrari. I mean, obviously, shorter circuits, you tend to get closer intervals between the cars, but this is going to be one heck of a scrap when we get to Q3. All right, end of Q2, and again, it's really close, but Sergio Perez went out late on and topped the times. We only we did two laps, but we did them with a cool-down lap, so we've only run once, essentially, and done a double push. Um, what, two push laps. Hamilton, a little bit slower than George Russell, and that's to be expected because um, he's got damaged car parts, the engine wear, basically, because he smashed up this one, which would have been his practice engine, this one, e, uh, engine 5, is now his practice engine and his race engine. Obviously, with Perez in front of us, he's giving us a bit of a slipstream, but he'll give us dirty air through the corners. There is a wild Lando Norris very in the way there, causing all sorts of problems in the middle sector. Perez looks like he's uh, fastest in both sectors. He is. And uh, Hamilton actually goes a bit quicker than his teammate there. I think we got blocked. And also we're carrying more fuel. So let's see how the second run pans out. Verstappen only fifth. And Leclerc has got himself into P2. Right. Perez into the pit lane. And Russell across the line to start his next flying lap. Let's keep an eye on this. Norris is uh, getting in the way again. Russell with a purple first sector. Hamilton not a personal best. And traffic... Russell flying. Is he about to snatch back provisional pole position? Hamilton not improving at all. Oh, he's a tenth and a half short. And here comes Hamilton. And yeah, we're happy with that. there's absolutely no improvement for Hamilton. Verstappen has just done his final effort and only gone fifth. I think he got a bit of traffic from his teammate who is on a flying lap now. That they're shooting their shot now. We're, we're going out very late here. Hopefully we we make it round. There's two minutes left. It's a short lap. We should be fine. But we are actually very, very close. Probably too close, actually. Hamilton is right behind Russell. Um, this could either be fantastic or an absolute calamity across the line. And they're fighting across the line. <laughs> no! No! Don't. Don't fight teammate. Just follow him. I love how you can use that in qualifying. Russell. Not an improvement, but Hamilton improves. Two tenths really to find if we want to be on pole position with George Russell. He's set a personal best first sector. So middle sector. It's quicker than Hamilton's. Here we go then. <laughs> They're going to cross the line at the same time. Who's gone pole? Perez has pole, but Hamilton two thousandths of a second behind his teammate. Um, well, I mean, we probably could have done a better job there if I was concentrating a bit more on the timing of when I released the cars. But second and third, and uh, Verstappen sixth on the grid. So this is a great opportunity for Russell to close that gap and maybe even take the lead of the Drivers' World Championship. Strategies are set for the two drivers. 
going to go medium, hard, soft. I want to finish on the soft tyres and give us that flexibility. We've got a fresh set of softs to use, so we can maybe eke out the hard tyres a little bit, go a bit deeper into the race, maybe stop on lap sort of lift 55, and then you've got 15 laps to really push. I've underfueled the cars a little bit more than I have been doing this season. Obviously, in Silverstone, we had the rain. But I'm hoping that if we can just sit behind Perez and, well, take advantage of the fact that we're light, we can conserve fuel and maybe even get ahead and conserve fuel. So uh, we'll have a little bit of work on to, to deal with that. But there might be a safety car because it's a, it's a narrow track. So wait and see. Um, yeah, it's time to do a motor race. Perez and Russell on the front row. Lewis Hamilton coming from third. The lights are out. The race is on. George Russell will have the magic inside line, hopefully for turn one. He's moving alongside the Red Bull. Hamilton is actually pulling ahead of Russell. And they're very close. Russell will hang on to second place. Perez holds the lead for Red Bull. Verstappen is fending off a stroll, I think. Russell now setting about the lead Red Bull. So let's, let's ask Lewis not to fight his teammate after turn one. And see if we can get Russell into the lead and then we can maybe start playing some games with Red Bull there. What everyone else started on. Perez actually started on softs. So this is this is interesting because they're going to go a different way on strategy. So hopefully we'll have faster tyres at the end of the race. And if we can stay with them, or stay with Perez, then that's great. And George, George Russell is going for the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. And he's got it. It was kind of out of nowhere. I didn't expect him to be close enough to make the move, but he has. Let's watch that again, because I was fiddling around with some settings. Around the outside, with the DRS, we're still avoiding the high-risk curves, and we're managing tyre temperatures, which means we can attack on the tyres. And now George Russell leads this race, and as it stands, I believe he would take the lead of the World Championship. Here comes Perez. And by the way, our DRS effectiveness on the car analysis is the best. So when we get DRS, we are a potent force to be reckoned with. Tire-wise, we are the best of anybody because we're avoiding those high-risk curves, keeping them nice and cool, which means we can attack. So everything is going lovely, lovely, lovely. The only thing we probably need to do for the moment is just maybe conserve a bit of fuel. Oh no! George Russell's off! He's locked up because he's on attack mode. I don't believe it. He's blown it. He's absolutely bottled it in the lead. Oh dear. Says he's P9 now. That is... If we could just drop back a bit. Oh, he's 10th. Takes him ages to get back on the track. His tyres are mudded. Right, Hamilton, it is now down to you. Hamilton Russell has lost seven positions. Because he just sat there. I'm sure he could have got back on in those few seconds between Hamilton and Leclerc. Okay, so we've got some work to do with George Russell now. I've just asked him to avoid the high risk curb, to stop avoiding the high risk curbs, and uh, I think he got on the curb and it spat him straight off the track. The leaders doing 19 fives and 19 nines. Hamilton looking like he's about to take the lead of the race and through goes Hamilton. Those magic words. Uh, I think Perez's tyres are much worse for wear. We'll avoid Hamilton to ask, avoid, ask him to avoid, stop avoiding the high-risk curves. We'll deploy and go balanced on the fuel. See if we can get out of DRS range against the Red Bull. This might just work perfectly for Hamilton. And he is outside that one second window. Right, Hamilton has pulled a gap to Perez, who now pits from second place. Russell has caught this pair of Aston Martins. 
that are fighting and we need to find a way through. Perez comes out in 12th place on a set of mediums. So unless they're going soft, medium, medium, could that work? In fact, Russell has overtaken Stroll while I'm considering strategy around the outside of turn two. Excellent move. Best place to go around the outside of turn two when you want to make an overtake because you get the inside for turn three and you can then just sort of force your, your rival wide a bit. Uh, let's not worry about tyres for now <laughs> uh, in terms of the strategy. Let's just manage everything. Russell is fine now. He's just going to build up some battery and we're also just going to hopefully move our way through this lot. What's Alonso's on mediums that are about the same amount of wear as Russell's and Russell has been off the track with a lockup, so he's not in that bad a position at the moment. Hamilton almost 10 seconds in the lead now thanks to Esteban Ocon, former Mercedes reserve driver playing his role very well. So Russell driving clean air, deploy and push but we're not quite close enough. Oh, that's an Alpha Tauri trying to unlap itself and almost causing carnage. But through goes George Russell, the Russell shuffle. It gets you in the end. And uh, let's keep attacking through past Alonso. Now he could close up and catch Verstappen, who's still out on his softs. Uh, Perez is setting fast lap times. But he is on mediums that are going to be much worse for wear. In comes Russell, followed by Alonso. So we need a good stop here so we don't have to bother with the Aston Martin. Perez will probably undercut Hamilton. The lead is 13.2 seconds. Russell comes out behind Ocon, who's fallen behind Verstappen and Leclerc, who both undercut him. But Russell, on those hards... Leclerc also on hard tyres. I think we're going to have some pretty good pace to get to the end. In comes Hamilton on the optimal lap. Oh, slightly slow start there, 4.6. Perez will go through. Where's Sainz? He's coming round the final corner. Hamilton rejoins in second position. And Perez is going to be trying to build some kind of gap. Verstappen actually just two and a half seconds back from Hamilton on medium. So he'll he'll probably catch Hamilton, who is also saving fuel. But the strategy will come to us, I'm sure. Alonso has just overtaken Russell. That wasn't in the script. But if we can just stay behind him and he can press on, what is Alonso on? Hards? Yeah. So uh, hopefully he can just string us along. And Hamilton will close the gap on Perez and the race will come to us. Verstappen's right on Hamilton and looks like he wants to come through and make it a Red Bull 1-2. This is, oh, that's a brave round the outside. There he goes, Verstappen. But their strategy will have them on the hards towards the end of the race. We're going to be on softs, and they're going to be on used hards. So as long as we can catch them, the Red Bulls probably won't have much of a defence. It's a, it's a story we've seen before around Budapest. Mercedes chasing down Red Bull. Russell still having it out with Alonso. Let's deploy and attack... And just go for it. We've got to catch Albon. And then once we've got DRS, that'll help us defend. Going to ask Hamilton to attack and just stay with Verstappen, really. Keep those tyres nice and cool. And Perez is coming back to them on his much older mediums. Hamilton, in fact, deciding he wants to go past the Red Bull driver in front of him. And I think he's going to do exactly that. He's going to retake second place. Russell has got DRS off the back of Albon. So now he can 
defend from Alonso, who's actually dropped back. So this is working out nicely for us. All right, drive in clean air with Lewis. We'll push and we'll also deploy. And we will now take the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Here we go, DRS down the straight. Our effectiveness with DRS is second to none. And uh, off goes George Russell. The Russell Shuffle will get you. And now we can get after Sainz and Leclerc. Verstappen now side by side with his teammate. Red Bull, instead of focusing on trying to catch Hamilton, they are fighting amongst themselves. Oh, imagine if they'd collided there. There was some sparks as the cars hit the ground. Perez is actually going to get DRS here and probably be in front. Yeah, so that's another lap that... Verstappen is going to spend behind his teammate. This is all going great guns for Mercedes. Very, very pleasing to see Red Bull fighting amongst themselves. Russell making a bit of a comeback through the field. Let's drop the aggression on the tyres and uh, just close the gap to signs. Hamilton having a lovely old time in the lead. Long may it continue. Russell has just got himself into third place. He's caught and passed. Charles Leclerc in the other Ferrari. Look at this. This is some comeback from George Russell. So I think he's looking at potentially a worst case scenario of fourth place. He makes another overtake. And for Lewis Hamilton, the, the magic number he needs to be concerned about is the pit loss delta to Perez. Under green flags, it says it's 22 seconds. We're currently 20.5 seconds ahead of Perez will, and that's increasing because he's stuck behind Albon. But we've still got another 10 laps to do on these tyres at least. So we're going to be stopping around lap 55, 54 maybe. And then, well, the gap is now 21 seconds as Perez makes his way past the Williams. Russell is even closing down Verstappen. He's flying. He's 17-5 for, for Russell. He's absolutely smashing it. We're so fast. It's incredible. Who knew Mercedes could be so fast with a ground effect car? Verstappen into the pit lane for surely a set of hard tyres. It is indeed a set of hard tyres. So uh, he'll get an undercut on Hamilton. We're now running first and second, albeit 10 seconds apart. So we could probably pit them on the same lap, although Russell's tyres are a little bit more used than Hamilton's are. In comes Lewis Hamilton. Soft tyres going onto the Mercedes. It's a good stop, 2.8 seconds. Where's Perez? Here he comes. Are we actually going to retain the lead? We're going to be right on Perez. The, the, the Alpha Tauri there getting in the way. 2.7 stop for Russell. Let's get the tyres up to temperature. We are 1.5 seconds behind Perez. I mean, he can try all he wants, but on those used hards, he's going to have no answer to the pace that Lewis Hamilton's going to have here. I think we could even finish this race first and second again. I think we've got that much pace. Hamilton not yet in the DRS range of Perez, but he will be soon. All right, Hamilton is very much in DRS range, so uh, we're going to push and we're going to deploy and we're going to enjoy because I think Lewis Hamilton's about to take the lead of the race. He's sold a little bit of a dummy there. Let's put him on high overtake aggression. Let's go for it. Is he close enough? We might even need to do it into turn two. He's not actually going to be able to make the move here or oh, is he here he goes Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the Hungarian Grand Prix a race he has won on so many occasions and he's back into position one You're doing a great job, though. and Mercedes return to the lead of the race let's watch it again fabulous Russell is catching Verstappen, who's actually nine seconds off his teammate. I think he might have just had a bit of traffic. A 16-8 there for 
Russell Hamilton was a second faster than Perez, but hasn't managed to drop the Red Bull yet. Tire-wise, Perez will start to drop back, but everything is, is fine for us at the moment. In fact, we are now pulling away from the Red Bull. And there goes the one second that we need. So now the question is, can we get George Russell to second position? First of all, we need to get him past his title rival Verstappen for uh, third and at least get him on the podium. We'll have loads of energy to smash through the Red Bull on the pit straight. Uh, Hamilton is now eight seconds in the lead. We can conserve fuel with him. With Russell, we are now going to deploy and ask him to drive in clean air. And hopefully this is the moment. In fact, no, he's dropped out of DRS range. He wasn't fast enough. Okay, well, we'll have to sort that out for the next lap. He's back into DRS range now. His overtake aggression is on high. In fact, he's right behind the red pond now. So surely this time across the start-finish straight, he will take that position. They are homing in on Perez. Got a yellow flag. And it was Leclerc running wide. And that's a McLaren in the way. Please get out the way. Uh, what I think we need to do is drop back to aggressive and take off the avoid high-risk curbs because that's hurting our pace in the final sector. Tire-wise, uh, we can probably just go standard with Hamilton, in fact, even light, and just manage our tyres to the end of the race. The Red Bulls are now fighting each other. Verstappen going through. And uh, Russell will soon be past Perez. He's kind of got a little bit stuck here, which is not ideal. And all the while the Perez has DRS, the harder he is to overtake. Let's conserve fuel so we've got some to, to really go for it with. That 1-2 finish is tantalisingly close, and I want it. Let's get George driving in clean air. Deploy and push. Surely this time he's going to the inside. He'll go through, surely. On the inside. Good job. The Russell shuffle up to third position. And now Verstappen will uh, be very much under pressure. In fact, we're going around the outside of him now. Mercedes are first and second again. Russell wasted no time in taking on Max Verstappen around the outside of turn four. That was just daredevil stuff. Gets the inside line for turn five. The magic inside line of F1 manager. And now we are first and second, and we'll even get some DRS off the Alfa Romeo here. Uh, Russell was 14 points behind Verstappen. It'll now come down to uh, 11 points, because it's just three points difference between second and third. But for Hamilton, he takes 10 points out of Verstappen's advantage, which isn't really enough, but you know, if you do that over the course of seven or eight races... It soon adds up. And uh, Lewis Hamilton starts the final lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix. A feeling he knows very well. Another race then where we've got the strategy right. Russell probably should have won this race. But he made a mistake. Hamilton didn't make the mistake. And he reaps the benefits. Lewis Hamilton secures a fourth straight win for Mercedes. His second in a row. George Russell makes it back-to-back. 1-2 -back. Hey, finishes back. for Mercedes. So We've pizza. beaten Red Bull once again. We were faster than them. We out-strategized them. We've made them look a bit second-best today, even though they had pole position. Brilliant job. Get in there, Lewis. And leave your love for that in the comments. We're getting a bit used to this, aren't we? Seeing our driver climb out the car victorious. So George Russell won uh, two in a row earlier this season. And then we've now gone and won 
four in a row. Canada, Austria, Silverstone, and now Budapest. Three out of the last four have gone to Lewis Hamilton. Russell has finished on the podium in all of those races, uh, I believe. Obviously winning in Austria. He's finished second to Hamilton both times. And every time Hamilton has won, we finished first and second. So, uh, yeah, more celebrations. And for the first time, Max Verstappen joins us on the podium. Uh, yeah, more celebrations in the uh, Netflix about, by the way. More, more Mercedes celebrations in the garage. Great stuff. Hamilton moves up two places, wins from third on the grid because Perez was on the wrong tyres at the wrong times and George Russell made a mistake. And we've beaten Max Verstappen to it as well. So uh, Ferrari, nowhere. They finished way off the pace. In fact, they finished behind Ocon's Alpine. And, uh, who remembers at the start of season one where Aston Martin were our big rivals and we were trying to beat them? Drivers' Championship then, 11 points the gap between Verstappen and Russell. Hamilton now 47 points off the Dutchman, 17 behind Perez. So uh, we can start really thinking about a title tilt with both drivers, who are also locked in for another few years as well. Constructors' Championship, the lead is 28 points for Red Bull now. Basically halved almost halved the, the gap to them and uh, yeah a brilliant result another win for Mercedes could we say the Mercedes dominance is back I mean we're unlikely to win Spa but who knows the rain could come and turn that race completely upside down if you enjoyed that race another victorious performance for Mercedes give the video Nice big thumbs up for me. Subscribe for more F1 Manager content. I'll see you in Spa where maybe there'll be some rain. And uh, I'll see you next time. You're the best fans. It's bye for now.